I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. This is the FreeSky Horus X10S, and I've actually had this sitting on my shelf for a disappointingly long time, and I want to do a review of it for you guys. I know I'm always the last one in the world to review products, but the internet doesn't want you to just churn out clickbaity stuff with keywords in it as fast as possible to get views. They want quality content that has takes time to get to know a product. So here's the reason I haven't reviewed this product yet. It's that I haven't been flying with it. And the reason I haven't been flying with it is because it comes with free sky OS, FROS on it. And I'm an open TX guy all the way, right? So first we got to put open TX on this radio. And that is what we're going to do today. Stay tuned. A lot of people are updating the firmware on their Tyrannus these days. I saw this at Quad Camp. There were many people who were installing Crossfire on their quadcopter. Uh, and in order to run Crossfire, you need, I think it's OpenTX221. Or many people wanted to run Lua scripts so they could change their PIDs, their rates, and even their video transmitter settings from their Tyrannus. And flashing the Tyrannus to a new version of OpenTX can be simple, but even if you know how to update your Tyrannus and you feel like you're an old hand at this, don't just dive into the X10S. It's got some differences from the, if you've ever updated like a QX7 or an X9D, the X10 and the Horus, the Horus radios, the X10, the X12 have some small differences in how they store the operating system that you're going to want to be aware of. As we go through this video, I've got to give a huge, huge thanks to... Mike Daly, Jan Urbanek, Bertrand Songis, and Andre, I'm going to guess it's Bernay, but maybe it's not. Sorry if I mispronounced your name, guys. I got to give a huge, huge thanks to these guys for creating this PDF document. And basically, this whole video is just going to be me working through this document. Now, there is a link to this document down in the video description, and, and they tell you not to do this in YouTube school. If you guys would rather just read the PDF and follow along for yourself, just stop watching this video right now and go, <laughs> there's a link in the video description. But if you want me to sort of talk you through it and work you through it step by step, I know a lot of you guys are out there. That's what we're going to do. And the first thing we're going to do before we put OpenTX on the radio is we're actually going to back up the FreeSky OS that's on there right now. And you might think, well, I don't care about FreeSky OS. I want OpenTX. Why should I back that up? There's a good reason. On the Tyrannus radios, you could flash the firmware on the internal RF module with OpenTX separately from flashing the operating system. On the uh, X10S radio or the X10 radios, I suppose the Horus radios as a whole maybe, you flash the internal RF module by updating the FreeSky. It's one and the same. So if at any point in the future you ever need to update the RF module, then you're going to need FreeSky OS to be on the radio so that the FreeSky updater can do its thing. Now, you probably will never have to do this, but you never know, and it doesn't hurt to you just a little bit of hard drive space to stick that back up somewhere on Dropbox or OneDrive or whatever and, and have it ready to go. So let's do, let's back up the radio first. Big warning here, red letters. As we go through this process, we're going to be moving files onto and off of the flash memory of the X10S. And if you screw that process up, the operating system of the radio can stop working. And that's a problem because the radio needs the operating system to access the USB. So if you screw this up, you can basically brick the radio. You won't be able to fix it because you won't be able to get at the USB to fix the thing that you screwed up. And somewhere there's probably a fix for it out there on the internet, but suffice it to say, we don't want to put ourselves in that situation. So be real careful that you do the steps as shown and don't just delete something willy nilly and lock yourself out of the radio. And then you just got a $500, $400. It's, it's pretty. <laughs> to follow this procedure, you're going to need two SD cards. Uh, they need to be no bigger than 32 gig and they need to be formatted as FAT32. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to take this 16 gig card, put it in my card reader, plug it into my computer, and I'm going to go to my computer and I'm going to right click the drive and make sure you got the right drive selected and I'm going to hit format and I'm going to choose FAT32 as the file system. 
that's what I need to do. And I'm going to format it. Okay, now it's formatted FAT32. Then I'm going to go into the drive and I'm going to create the following directories. New folder firmware and new folder logs. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to insert the SD card into the slot on the radio. The SD card slot is right here at the bottom of the radio. We're going to insert the card with the metal contacts facing up. We'll just slide it into the slot and it's spring loaded. So just press it in and it, it rests just a little bit below the surface of the radio. So uh, you may need to just press it in slightly with your fingernail or a tool. And with the system plugged on, I'm going to plug in a mini USB cable into the back of the radio. Why mini USB? Why not micro? Do you know how long I had to search to find a mini USB cable? Anyway. Also, hey, hey, Free Sky, why the back of the radio? I'm going to plug this in, and then when I put it down, it's going to rest. It's going to push on it. I need to get a right angle connector. Why not the bottom of the radio, like on the QX7? Free Sky, come on. Get your, get your shit together. And when I do that... Now I've got the USB icon here on the uh, front of the display indicating that I am USB connected. And when you plug in USB, you should see here on your, well, this is Windows and in my PC, you should see two new USB drives appear just like so. And that'll indicate that everything is going correctly. One of these is the internal flash memory of the Horus. That's obviously, it must be this one because it's got already stuff on it. And one of these is the SD card that you just installed. That's probably this one, which is empty and it's the right size, 14 gig, 16 gig. If you screw this one up, that's how you can brick your radio. So just so you know, if we look at this one, yeah, firmware and logs. And if we look at this one, that's the inside of the radio. What we're going to do is we're going to copy these files. We're going to copy them. We're not going to move. We're not going to cut. We're going to copy these files. We're going to go to a folder on your hard drive. Like I've got a folder already called Tyrannus Backups. I'm going to name, I'm going to make a new folder and I'm going to call it So that's our backup of FreeSky OS. If we ever need to go back to FreeSky OS from OpenTX for any reason, that's how we'll do it. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to download the contents of the SD card that OpenTX is going to expect to see. OpenTX expects to see certain files on the SD card, like the, the uh, sound files and so forth. We're going to go to opentx.org. I'm going to click on the downloads uh, link, and I'm going to go to, well, I'm going to go to OpenTX 221. That's the most recent version at the time that I'm making this video. There may be a newer one uh, at the time that you're watching this, in which case you should probably use it. We're going to go to OpenTX 221 and we're going to go to the SD card content for 221. And we're going to pick OpenTX X10 and here it is. This zip file is going to download and you're going to need some kind of utility to open the zip file. Probably there's already one on your operating system. So I'm going to open up that zip file and here is the contents of the zip file and I need to copy this over to my SD card. So here are my two USB drives that appeared when I plugged in my Horus. And this one, remember, is the, is the system, the internal flash memory. Don't screw with this one. This is your SD card with the firmware and the logs that you made. And I'm going to go to the zip file. I'm going to select all of the contents, including this SD card.version file. You need to get that as well. And I'm going to just drag that over to the SD card and it's going to copy it all over. While that is copying, as you can see, that's going to take a minute, um, six minutes. While that's copying, you can go ahead and download from OpenTX.org, OpenTX Companion version 221 or whatever version is the most recent one at the time. Uh, but it needs to be the same version that, uh, for the SD card contents that you downloaded. You can go ahead and download and install OpenTX Companion, uh, which is just a standard Windows app, or I don't know what you, if you have Mac OS or Linux, I hope that you know what to do because I sure don't. Next thing to do is unplug the radio from USB 
And uh, in my experience, this causes it to power down, which is what you want. And then plug the radio back into USB with the radio powered down. Now, nothing will appear to happen, but don't worry. The next thing you need to do is you need to fix the STM32 bootloader driver. This is something you may have done before with your flight controller. If you've ever run the uh, Zadig program to install the Win USB driver, just let those words go in and out of your ears, it doesn't matter. Or if you've ever used the Impulse RC driver fixer. It's the same thing, it's the same driver even though this is not a flight controller. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to use the Impulse RC driver fixer and see if that works. That's the simplest way to do it. If that does work, I'll show you where to download that. Oh, yay. Okay, so it worked. Good. So you can get the Impulse RC Driver Fixer by just typing Impulse RC Driver Fixer. And it's on the downloads page from Impulse RC. If you use Betaflight, if you use any of this stuff, you just got to have this installed permanently on your desktop and you're going to use it all the freaking time. Now your driver is fixed. Yay. Moving on to the next step. The next step is to go into OpenTX Companion, which in my case started automatically after I finished the install. And what I need to do is I need to go settings, settings, and here where it says radio type, I need to make sure that I have selected FreeSky Horus X10 X10S. It's critical that you do this or the next stuff is not going to go well and you could screw up your radio. Okay. And what we're going to do now is we're going to back up the FreeSky OS. Wait, I thought we already did that when we copied those files off the SD card. I don't know, but I'm just following the steps. Let's do the steps in the order we're told to. I'm going to go right here and I'm going to click this icon, which is, which is read firmware from radio. I'm going to go into that folder where I stored the files I pulled off the flash memory. And I'm just going to call it, I don't know. A free sky os backup sure let's do it and what the instruction says is that this creates a backup file that we can use to restore free sky os to the radio if the radio ever gets screwed up and i don't know i'm just following the steps i'm going to navigate on my computer to the folder where i stored uh, that file and i'm just going to make sure that it's there ah see it's not there yeah so i thought Why did that not work? Exit code equals three, show details. More than one DFU capable. Oh, that's so annoying. What is doing that? That's really frustrating. What's the fix? Some people are saying they fixed that issue by plugging into a USB port on the computer instead of uh, on a USB hub. Let's give that a go. I am going to need to run the Impulse RC driver fixer again. Every time you plug it into a different USB port or whatever, you have to do it again. All right, let's give it another go. Oh, hey, that worked. Hallelujah. <laughs> Well, there you go. So then we'll just make sure that the file is actually present by going to that folder. And we're going to look. And we should see a file that is about two, uh, two megabytes, 2,000 kilobytes uh, right there. Okay, yes, it was successful. We do have the backup now. Now we're going to download the firmware we're going to flash to the radio and let's just make sure that we, I do want the Lua script options and I use the no heli option because I don't want I don't, that's that has options for collective pitch helicopters which I don't fly and I'm just going to double double check that free sky horse x10 x10s and I like to rename that because I have multiple radios I like to just rename the, the profile here so I know what I've got. Let's see. Anything else? I don't think we need anything else. So we're good. And then here in the application settings, uh, the instructions tell us to make sure that the options are set up. Yep. All good there. Uh, the instructions say to choose 
uh, releases and release candidates, we don't need to do that because OpenTX221 has officially released, so we're good to go. Now we're going to download this firmware by clicking this download button. And we're going to save that firmware somewhere. I personally like to put the firmware in the program files folder. That's just where I like to leave it. Open TX, companion to two. I just stick them in there. I don't know. They go anywhere. Also, you know, there's a button here to download the SD card contents. And I don't know why we don't use that instead of downloading it manually from the website. But everywhere I've seen says that they, all the instructions I see says to download it from the website. So I do, but it seems like you could just click that button and it'd be a little simpler. Okay, good. Latest download, 221RC99. Okay. And then the moment of truth, we're going to write the firmware to the radio. 221, yada, 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 write to TX. This is the part where I get real nervous and pray that nothing goes wrong. I don't touch the USB connector. I don't move. I just sit real still and watch the progress bar go up. Now it says flashing done. Now we find out if we've been successful. Please, oh please, God's affirm more flashing. I offer you my prayer. Do not let my radio be bricked. Let everything have gone right. Show me the startup screen. <gasps> it says open TX. Oh no. Uh I'm gonna press a key. Welcome to Open TX. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, you guys. It's open TX, you guys. You guys, it's open TX is on my radio. Oh my god, you guys. Open TX is on my it's so beautiful. I love it. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Well, open TX is on the radio. It seems like everything worked. If anything didn't work, uh I'll 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 tell you about it. But that's gonna do it for this video. I put open TX on my horse. Ooh, it's so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. Uh, happy. I'm going to go play with my radio now. Oh. Oh.